Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem kth smallest number in multiplication table. I'm going to explain the binary search approach in detail along with the intuitions of how do we even come to that point and how do we implement that in Python 3. Let's get started with the problem discussion. Alright, let's start with the problem discussion. We're given three integers m and, and k. m and n represent the dimensions of the matrix where matrix of i j is the same as i times j. So just to demonstrate, here is an example. Let's say that the element we want is 12. 12 is just a multiplication of the index 3 and the index 4. Similarly, the value 15 say is just a multiplication of 5 here, which is the row index and 3 here, which is the column index. And in this way, we are going to create the matrix of the size m cross n. The goal of this problem is to return the kth smallest element inside of this matrix table. Okay, uh, let's take an example. This is 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 6 and 3, 6, 9, where m equals to 3 and n equals to 3. Now, what if we are asked to find the value for k equals to 5? We want the fifth smallest element inside of this table. Okay, if, since we want the smallest one, I think it's a good idea to just sort all of them and see what happens. So they've shown the sorting over here where we have 1, 2 2s, 2 3s, 1 4, 2 6 and 1 9. Pretty simple. It's just sorting of all of the elements present inside of this matrix. Now we can very easily find out the kth element. Just go to the kth index, pick whatever the answer is and return that. Super simple, right? In fact, this forms the basis for the brute force solution. All right, when it comes to the brute force solution, we observe that the first step we have to do is create the matrix. Now, this is super sneaky. N note how the question does not give you the matrix. It only gives you the dimensions of the matrix specifying specified by M and N. And it says you have to go and create the matrix yourself. Okay, so the first thing we'll have to do is create the matrix ourselves because we're given n, m, n, m and n. So we'll multiply, uh, we'll iterate over all of the values, figure out the matrix. Once we have the matrix, the next step to find the smallest element is to sort all of those elements. So then we sort all of those elements taking m, n, log m, n, space and time each. And finally finding the kth element. And that can be done in order of one time. The total space time complexity now becomes mn log mn because of the sorting operation. Now, this solution itself wouldn't have been too bad. After all, this is brute force approach. We don't expect it to work. In this question, that's even more true because the m and n constraints say that each of them, each of them can be 3 into 10 to the power 4, which means that m times n, which is the size of the matrix, is going to go 9 into 10 to the power 8. Now, even if that does not give you a time limit error, it may end up giving you a memory limit error. Either way, brute force solution is not what we want to code up. We want something better. Something that can perhaps run in lesser than order of m and time. All right, what have, been, what have we been trying to do up till now? We were first of all trying to create a matrix sort all of these elements and then being then accessing the kth element to find the answer. But what if we change things around? What if instead of looking at the kth element and trying to find the answer in this direction, what if we instead have these numbers give the k? This forms the basis for our entire solution. This is a simple change in perspective. Instead of going from k to the number, we are going from number to k. Okay, what does that mean? Let's explore. All right, let's say that the target element is 5. Let's just assume that I'm going to give you 5 as one possible answer. Can you tell me what all are the elements which are lesser than or equals to 5? Can you return me the number of numbers lesser than or equals to 5? Okay, fine. So I'm going to go ahead and color all of these elements, which are lesser than equals to five. Fine. So how many of these numbers there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are 10 total elements lesser than equals to five. And you can go ahead and confirm this over here because there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10 total elements lesser than equals to five. Fine. 
Okay, so what now? Well, we want a better way to find the answer. We want a way to return the number of numbers lesser than equals to a particular target. And what we can just do is iterate over all the elements in order of m and time and get the answer, but that's too much work. We want to make things easier. And there's a mathematical observation that we can make. And this is one of those where you have to know the answer to understand the answer. It's not really super intuitive, but once you know the answer, you can easily expand it to other problems. What are we trying to do? I'm saying that the number of numbers inside of a particular row i is just target by i. This makes a lot of sense. So let's say that the target is 5 as we saw before. If the i is 1, if the row number is 1, what all are the elements which are lesser than or equal to 5? All of the elements because 5 by 1 gives 5. So 5 is the answer over here. What if i equals to 2? What if we are looking at the second row? How many number of numbers are there which are less than or equal to 5? 2. You can go ahead and count that as well. And that is just 5 by 2. Right? Similarly for 3, 4 and 5 also. In fact, this is so important that we're going to use it in the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and write the function. Let's say that this is the function which is going to take the input as a target element. Now we want to return the sum of all of the numbers. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do target by i for i in range of uh, 1 comma m plus 1 is uh, one index. So we have to go from one up till m plus one. So it's one to m both inclusive basically. All right. So what do we do once we get the sum? We can return this as the answer for the function. This is the how many number of numbers are there lesser than or equals to this target element. Now this may seem useless, but it's going to become very important later on. There's also one uh, small modification I want to make because let's say that the number was 100 and the row we are looking at was 2. Fine. The target is 100 and i equals to 2. So what is the number of elements in that row? Is it 100 by 2? Is it 50? It is not. We'll have to take the minimum of what this value gives and the n, the number of columns a particular row has. This is just an implementation level detail but a very important one. All right, let's go ahead and write that down as well. Instead of taking target by i, we're going to take target by i, comma n's minimum. All right, cool. So we can now finally come on to the most important part of the solution, which is trying to understand how does binary search even come into play? Let's say that the k equals to six, fine. I'm gonna give you, and you want to return me for this five by five grid. Can you return me the sixth smallest element? Now, what did we do up till now? Well, we know that for target equals to 5, the total number of numbers is 10, right? So let me go ahead and show the diagram over here. We know that for 5, the target as 5, there are total number of 10 numbers below it, which means that we are trying to, which means that in this case, where target equals to 5, we are overshooting the k. k is somewhere present before the 5, because the count of 5 is 10 and k equals to 6, right? Okay, so let's say that, uh, okay, for target equals to five, total is 10, which is greater than six. So it is overshooting and we don't want that. So we understand now that for target equals to five, total is 10, which means that it is going to overshoot. It is going to overshoot the K. By the way, what can I also say about target equals to six or seven or hundred for that matter? All of these elements are greater than five. So which means, which definitely means that the total number of numbers, which for a target equal to six would be definitely greater than or equal to 10. This means that all of the values greater than or equal to five in the target are not valid. So we're looking for something smaller. Let's say it's, uh, let's say it's the target three. So what is the number of numbers lesser than or equal to three? So we have one, two, three, four, five. There are five numbers lesser than or equals to three. Now this is clearly undershooting. We want to find the sixth element, but three only gives five total elements. 
what can we do now all right so let's ask the question for target equals to four what is the number of numbers lesser than or equals to four we can count that again one two three four five six seven eight there are a total of eight numbers lesser than or equals to four but this also overshoots this is clearly not equals to k so we found five three and four and none of them matched five said it's too much three said it's too less four said it's too much again so what is the answer then the answer is four the answer is four because go ahead and let's go ahead and look at the visual and what is the number of numbers lesser than or equal to four this gives us the answer as eight one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight numbers present before this four there are 10 numbers present before this five and there are five numbers present before this three where does k, k equals to six lie in k equals to six lies in this range where it's greater than three but it's still lesser than five which means that it's in the middle and in this way we find the k we need all right so what did we do when target was equals to five the total was 10 which meant that we were overshooting the k 5 was just too much of a number we wanted a number that was lesser than that any number greater than equals to 5 would have a total definitely greater than equals to 10 right and similarly we looked at the number 3 and the number 3 told us that the total was 5 now 5 is lesser than 6 which means that it's undershooting now any number less than or equals to 3 would also have a total less than equals to 5 now this is where things get a lot more interesting because this is exactly the idea behind binary research 5 was too much we cut down all of the numbers greater than 5 3 was too little we cut down all of the numbers lesser than 3 so in this way we reduced the search space by going in different directions all right let's get started with the code for binary search i'm going to set up two variables low and high with the value of 0 and uh, m plus 1 times n plus 1 now, what is the condition for binary search? We'll say while low is lesser than high, this is just going to be a standard implementation. I want to extract the middle element first. So that is going to be low plus high by two. And I want to say, you know what? If the function of mid, if the number of numbers which are less than equals to mid is lesser than k, this means that the mid is undershooting, then go ahead and increase the low to mid plus one else just set the high equals to mid right so what we're trying to do is we're trying to push the elements like this we're trying to find the low 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 which perfectly matches with this condition of k and so what we can do is at the end return low uh, let's also run some sample test cases and we can finally go and submit this all right, so we got a runtime of 796 milliseconds, faster than 91% of the people. Pretty good, pretty good. Anyways, yeah, this is it for the problem. Uh, Kth smallest element in multiplication table.